Okay, sir. Everywhere, right where you are, is perfect. Good morning, and thanks for being here. I know we have probably 15 or 20 different uh, media outlets um, on the uh, World Wide Web, and appreciate them being here. Appreciate those of you who are here in person. Uh, I just wanted to uh, briefly touch on the weather uh, that we have all been dealing with, obviously with the announced fatality that occurred in North Mississippi uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, that was a tragic reminder uh, of the seriousness of what we're dealing with from a weather standpoint. Um, we certainly want to make sure that everyone across the state is careful uh, if you're getting out and about in the weather. Uh, we just got a situation report at 9 a.m. and I will tell you that um, obviously the, the most significant weather is in the eight northernmost counties. Uh, but even um, beneath there, it's mainly Grenada North, is uh, significant with sleet, freezing rain, snow, a combination uh, thereof. Uh, we currently have, as of 9.50 a.m., only 2,059 power outages statewide. But we also know that the um, temperature is not going to get above freezing at all today um, and probably will not get above freezing until sometime mid-afternoon tomorrow. So again, just a word of caution uh, to everyone across the state to be very, very careful if you're out and about. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, everyone for being here this morning, but I want to particularly thank um, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman, Speaker Jason White, uh, Senators Hobson and Harkins, and um, Senator Whaley. And I would also like to thank um, Speaker Pro Tem Manley, Barkin, Manley Barton, uh, Senator Josh Harkins for being here today. Um, I also spoke with um, Representative Trey Lamar, who is en route here and uh, had a little slow going. Uh, I know he'll be here shortly. I also spoke, uh, or the team spoke, with Representative uh, John Faulkner as well, uh, who represents Marshall County. Um, uh, Senator Kevin Blackwell also, who represents, uh, I believe, the, the northwest part of the county as well, and over in DeSoto County. What I will say this morning is that over the course of my administration, uh, it has been a priority uh, to work with our friends in the legislature to attract new economic investment and create new jobs for the people of Mississippi. But we're not just creating any new job. We're creating high-paying career opportunities that change people's lives. And at the same time, we've sought to develop a well-trained workforce that's ready to fill these new jobs. Recognizing this, it is my pleasure to announce this morning that I am calling a special session within the session to finalize a major economic development deal for our state. This project will be an over $1.9 billion capital investment in Marshall County, and it will create 2,000 new jobs. Let me say this one more time. $1.9 billion capital investment by the companies and 2,000 jobs. This will be the second largest capital investment in our entire state's history when it comes to CapEx, it will be the largest economic development deal in state history if you look at it on a payroll basis. 2,000 jobs at an average salary of $66,000 per job comes out to $132 million annual payroll for this company once fully um, completed. Just to put that in perspective for you, the single largest capital investment that's ever been made in our state happened to be 15 months ago uh, when all of us worked together to get that done in, in the Golden Triangle. That was a $93 million payroll. Um, and so, uh, again, this is about 40% larger even than that Steel Dynamics project when it comes to average payroll. Again, this is a massive win for the state of Mississippi. This economic development project involves the production and delivery of electric battery cells for use in the commercial automotive and industrial applications space. 
It will further enshrine Mississippi as a national leader in the automotive industry. This deal, in my view, is further proof of the good things that are happening in our state. The momentum we're experiencing at the moment is unprecedented. Mississippi is attracting new jobs, and our economy is growing stronger every day. Today's announcement further cements that. While the public discussions of this project begin today, it is important to note that this has been in the works for many, many months. And I want to thank all of those who have worked countless hours to get this historic project to this moment. I am grateful for our partners in the legislature for acting swiftly to finalize this project. The special session will begin on Thursday at 9.30 a.m., and I am excited to see this deal come to fruition. I met with the legislative leaders middle part of last week. Uh, we have had ongoing discussions, very positive, over the last four or five days. And the team, uh, Bill Cork and the team at Mississippi Development Authority, um, have not only been available to these leaders behind me over the last four or five days, they will be available to the uh, members of the legislature over the next day and a half. Um, and we look forward to seeing this project come to fruition. This is a team sport. Economic development is a team sport. It's not partisan. It doesn't matter what, what part of the state it is. This is going to change lives for thousands and thousands of people in North Mississippi, in Marshall County, and beyond. And that's something I hope we can all get behind over the next couple of days. Again, to sum it all up, the largest payroll commitment in our state's history, the second largest capital investment in our state's history, a $1.9 billion investment, 2,000 jobs, a $66,000 per year average salary, and another historic win in the great state of Mississippi. At this time, I'm going to ask Speaker Jason White to come and say just a few words. Speaker? Thank you, Governor. Um, we are excited to be here today, and, and as far as the House of Representatives, I would simply say um, it's a great day for Mississippi, and even furthermore, it's proof that the momentum here in our state is real. The governor ran on that, um, this idea that there's real momentum here, and this is the evidence of that. So I simply want to congratulate his team and his staff and him personally for um, working hard behind the scenes, uh, even as he was in the middle of a campaign. Um, they still, you know, they still did yeoman's work and were able to um, land this huge opportunity for our state. So I want to commend him and his team. I look forward to the legislature moving swiftly to finalize this deal. Um, all of the particulars appear to be in place. Um, it's a historic day, not only for um, Northeast Mississippi and North Mississippi, but our state as a whole. And we look forward um, to continuing that momentum with this deal um, and into the future. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And at this time, I'm going to ask Lieutenant Governor Hoseman to say a few words as well. Governor? Yeah, I emphasize a few. Um, first of all, this is part, this is a continuing part of Mississippi, and we are open for business. And people are recognizing that on the leadership of the governor and MDA and the hard work they do. You're recognizing the results of that, and it's the result of our, our, our education system improving, our tax structure going down, our people willing to work and get started. We, we have Mississippi open for business. And this will go through this, I anticipate this will go through the Senate quite rapidly. We'll be meeting with our senators today and tomorrow. Uh, I don't see any barrier at all to meeting the governor's request that we do this very quickly here in the legislature. And I think this is probably a, a start of what's gonna continue to be um, more and more development in the state of Mississippi because we have the best place in the country to bring your business. We have the culture here, we have the electricity here, we have the water here, we have the team leadership here, we have the education system, we have everything you need. If you're gonna invest somewhere, you ought to come talk to the governor because this is a place you need to be. So we're excited to have this as one more time that we're, that we're doing a significant economic development in Mississippi and we appreciate MDA and the governor's leadership on this matter. So we'll look forward to seeing everybody Thursday morning shortly. <laughs> Again, I want to thank everyone uh, for being here. Um, 
I obviously there are some details that I obviously cannot discuss at this time, but I am happy to answer some questions. I promised these guys behind me that if they wanted to take a seat, that they were more than welcome to do so, uh, because I'm sure there will be some that may be uh, off topic uh, that they uh, don't want to uh, have to uh, listen to uh, my responses. But again, I want to just before I open it to questions, I, I do want to say something specifically. Um, about Marshall County and their leadership. Um, Marshall County is, um, and their leadership have worked tirelessly on this project. Their economic developer has done yeoman's work. Their um, supervisors, uh, both the previous board and the incoming board, um, have worked unanimously to get to this point. And, and the fact of the matter is, we don't get to make announcements like that if we don't have a true partnership from the county, from the economic, local economic developer to the state and everyone in between. And I can say with certainty, um, I've worked with those uh, individuals for the last four years. I've worked with them on deals that we didn't win, and I've worked with them on deals that we have won. And what I can say is they are top notch, and I, I couldn't be prouder of the work that they have done and will do. Uh, to make this come to fruition. So we'll start with Ross, and then we're going to also take some questions from um, the Facebook Live feed. So, Governor, how much money would the legislature be required to put up to finalize this deal, and where is those dollars going to come from? So this particular project um, is uh, going to be going to include uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $350 million, about half of which is going to be um, in uh, infrastructure um, in and around the facility and about half of which is going to be in uh, direct grants to the company. So this particular um, project is going to be located in the Chickasaw Trail Industrial Park and so the significant infrastructure investments that we make not only are going to serve this particular facility, but it's actually going to serve hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres and open up hundreds of acres around this for additional capital investment. And so um, we're obviously excited about, um, about what this brings. If you go back and you look at the deal that was done in steel dynamics, which is aluminum dynamics today, what you see is uh, we will ask for um, bonding authority for the entirety of the project, uh, but then we've worked with uh, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman, Hoseman, Speaker White, and their teams, and I think you'll see uh, a big portion of that will be uh, appropriated. We are anticipating that we have about $650 million uh, in the general fund at June 30th of 2024. And so I think if you look at the cash flow needs of this particular project over the next year or so, it's about $117 million. And so I think we'll probably see uh, some appropriations of about, uh, about that amount, um, which will cash flow this. Because obviously when you build a $2 billion facility, it's going to take more than the next 30 days to get it built. So. Quick follow-up. So you said half of the 350 is going to be direct grants to the company. Approximately. So this is money the state has given to this company. What happens if the company fails, if this project doesn't go to fruition. So we have provisions in place. We have guarantees in place from um, the, the parent company uh, that should this venture not work, uh, which I will tell you, I've worked uh, quite a few of these deals over the last 20 years, and I am highly confident that this is going to be a project that not only works for the company, not only works for the state, but really is going to be an, an innovative uh, new facility which is going to continue to put Mississippi on the map when it comes to the automobile industry. Quite frankly, Mississippi is already a national leader in the automo automotive industry. We have Toyota here. We have Nissan here. Uh, Nissan has already announced, for example, uh, that they are going to do um, some of their electric vehicles and all of their electric vehicles in North America are going to be lo are going to be manufactured here in the state of Mississippi. Um, this is just the next step in uh, an ever-evolving uh, space. But as we get to uh, over the next 48 hours and it becomes apparent, um, the, the parent companies that are involved in this project, I, I'm confident that the entire state of Mississippi will be as confident as I am in the success of this project. Okay. 
He never asked good questions. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go ahead. We'll go with WLBT for now. Okay, uh, Governor, do we know the name of the company that's coming to Marshall County? By we, yes, we know the name of the company. I am not at liberty at disclosing uh, the name of the company today. Um, that will be announced on Thursday after the special session, which is uh, something that um, we have done on every Mississippi Major Economic Impact Act uh, piece of legislation that has been done. Um, that is obviously to uh, protect uh, the integrity of the process and, and the non-disclosure agreements that we have been uh, under for the last year. Um, but I will tell you, uh, the co company once announced, uh, company slash companies once announced, uh, will be household names um, to the people of Mississippi and, and all across America. And I think that's something that I would just reiterate is that the um, this project is really huge for everybody in the state of Mississippi, but I think this is also going to be a, a story that that reverberates all across this country, which shows, as, as Lieutenant Governor Hoseman said earlier, that Mississippi is open for business. Um, this very well could be one of uh, the largest economic development deals in the country in 2024. Um, obviously, uh, the, the largest capital investment we've ever seen in our state, we announced with many of these same individuals involved in the process just 15 months ago. Um, and so to build these kind of successes one on top of the other, uh, is really what shows uh, not only the folks of Mississippi but the people across America that Mississippi has momentum, that Mississippi is on the move, and that this is Mississippi's time. Great. Bobby, are you there? Yes, the governor. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you mentioned the name of the industrial park. Refresh my memory. Is that the one that uh, Mississippi shares with Tennessee, and if so, and even if it's not, I think it's right on the, the border with Tennessee, but Tennessee committed any resources to, to this project? The Chickasaw Trail Industrial Park uh, is not, none of the land of, the, of this particular uh, deal or the park is in the state of Tennessee. It is all in uh, the state of Mississippi. Um, the land that is being um, acquired um, for this particular project is all in the state of Mississippi um, and the entire deal will be in the state of Mississippi. Uh, I will tell you that there, there, there is a possibility that some of the employees may come from the state of Tennessee. My expectation is that if that is in fact the case, uh, that they're going to um, come down, work for this particular company and see how great it is to live in Mississippi and I think we'll see population growth, because I do think you'll see people moving uh, from all over the country, and quite frankly, all over the world, to work at this particular facility. Governor, I know that you said that y'all are under some non-disclosure um, agreements until the deal is finalized. Can you give any details about what the um, the company's what's going to be here, what the project is, or is that something that's going to be released on Thursday as well? This project involves the production and delivery of electric battery cells for use in the commercial, automotive, and industrial applications space. Richard? Yes, sir. Can you all hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, Governor, could you give us any uh, insight on the workforce uh, requirements maybe needed here for these positions? Are there any degree requirements or on-the-job training people will need in order to, uh, to get a job here? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. You know, as I mentioned earlier, while we've been out working very hard to bring new economic development to our state, We've also been working very hard with our um, legislative leadership over the last four years to improve on workforce development and workforce training. Um, there's no doubt that um, we have made some significant progress as a state in that regard. Uh, just uh, a report came out um, 
in the last two weeks which said that our workforce training programs surpassed both Louisiana and Texas last year alone. We've got more work to do. We all know we have more work to do. But many of these um, jobs um, are, are going to span from executive leadership, engineering, all the way down to advanced manufacturing. And so when you think about the programs that are already in place in the state, for example, um, uh, at Northwest Community College, which serves Marshall County, Northwest Community College just recently, and I was actually there for the grand opening, announced that their Batesville facility, they're doing EV technology training for many people in North Mississippi today. My estimation is that that is going to um, be significantly enhanced in the years to come. Um, but when you think about the programs at the University of Mississippi, specifically the um, specifically the um, program that they have at the Haley Reeves Barber Center, um, you're going to see significant opportunities for those kids that are at the University of Mississippi. When you look at the engineering degrees that are offered at Mississippi State University, every kid that's in electrical engineering or otherwise is going to have an opportunity to work at this particular facility. And so um, the, the total number of opportunities for uh, this particular uh, entity is going to be about 2,000 jobs. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I, I, I would be shocked if we didn't see suppliers locating very near this particular facility uh, because what you find in the EV space is there's a lot of clustering that goes on. The actual manufacturing occurs um, in one facility, but the uh, types of things that need to be done around it. And so while we're uh, while the company is uh, guaranteeing 2,000 jobs within a certain time frame, um, I, I'm very confident that because of this industry, because of the quality of the companies involved, you're going to see um, a tremendous amount of spinoff economic development uh, of which we have, we have already put the infrastructure needed for that additional investment in the Chickasaw Trails uh, Industrial Park into this specific deal. And so we're going to open up significantly more land. Um, and just for those of you who don't know exactly where the Chickasaw Trail Industrial Park is, it's basically just north of where 72 and 302 connect in Marshall County. Howdy, can you all hear me? We can. Technology works. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Governor, I just have a, a, just a few very small questions and a, and a good one. Um, I just want to ask, do you all know how, um, how many acres of land, or sorry, how many acres this project is going to use uh, for this facility? Um, you, said, you also said that it was an American household name. Is this an, uh, is this an American company um, or a foreign company? Or if it's, if it's not, is it a subsidiary of a foreign company? So it's 500 acres. The site itself is 500 acres for this particular investment. Um, I think you'll see um, that there will be um, uh, this entity will be a U.S.-based entity. Yes. Okay. And then uh, here's one follow-up. Um, I just wanted to ask, just for clarification's sake, but we're in the 2024 legislative session. Was there any uh, was there any reason why we called for the special session um, for this project? Well, this will come as a shock to you, but I tried really, really hard to make this announcement in October of 2023, um, but that the timing didn't work out for uh, everyone involved, and um, uh, I, I wish it had, but um, we've been working on this project for uh, approximately a year. We've been working on this particular site and projects associated with it in this particular industry for several years. Um, the, the, the reality is that Y'all have heard me say this before. When it comes to economic development, 20 years ago when I started in this business, the first question that was always asked was incentives. And they always get back to that question. But then 10 years or so ago, the question started being about workforce. Right now, the number one question that every entity asks about is speed to market. And so the reason we're doing a special session within the session, uh, the members of the, of the legislature are already here. But the special session allows for the, the, the 
um, not having to adhere to the strict guidelines that the regular session requires. And so, uh, again, we're going to make sure uh, I, I'm talk to them. The legislative leaders, uh, middle part of last week, we're going to spend the next two days talking to any legislator that wants to um, understand uh, what is in the transaction, what's in the deal. Um, 100% transparency. I think you can talk to the legislative leaders as to what we're doing. But for the simplicity for mainly the those who are making the investment, we want to announce these company names on Thursday afternoon as soon as the legislature completes their work uh, over five or six or four or five hour, however long it takes, uh, session on Thursday. We want this to be a one-day session, um, and I think everyone is in agreement. This is the best way to get a major project like this done. Every Mississippi Major Economic Impact Act that has passed in the Mississippi legislature uh, over the last 30 years or so uh, has been done in a special session, and so um, it's something that we're used to, and quite frankly, the language and the deal is going to be very, very similar to what we saw in Aluminum Dynamics. And so um, while the, the investor is different, while the terms are slightly different, um, the process is going to be uh, very, very similar to what we did 15 months ago. And, and over the last 40 years, we've had a Mississippi Major Economic Impact Act about once every 10 years. So the fact that we're here talking about this project today, just 15 months after we announced the previous one, I think that speaks to the amount of momentum that we have uh, in, in our state. And oh, by the way, um, once we get this done, and I'm hopeful that we will uh, over the next few days, don't think that we're going to stop chasing uh, really um, great opportunities to change lives for the people of Mississippi. Driving per capita income up requires that we bring better paying and higher paying jobs to Mississippians and we ensure that they have the training to do those jobs. Gotcha. Um, just one quick follow-up. Um, you said that you know uh, that it is a U.S.-based company. Does the does it already have a presence here in Mississippi operationally? Do they have any type of business here? Um, what, what I would tell you is, uh, once we get through the process, I think you'll find that that there will be multiple entities involved in this and they have uh, a large number of operations uh, all throughout the United States and Europe. Thank you, and Europe. Uh, thank you. Uh, Governor, I, I know uh, you said in the past that um, the, the best way that you would like to tackle Mississippi's high um, health and insurance rate is through private employers uh, offering employees health insurance. Um, so I'm just curious, since uh, you know you're, you're asking uh, the legislature to appropriate uh, tax dollars for this economic uh, this economic project, do you have any assurance from the company uh, involved that they will offer uh, you know good good quality benefits, primarily health insurance, to these employees? Yeah, thank you for that question, Taylor. The sixty-six thousand dollar a year salary does not include the additional benefits that this particular company will offer. And yes, I am highly confident that that benefits package is going to be very generous uh, for the 2,000 employees of this particular entity. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Governor. Uh, it's a kind of a double question that I have for you, Governor. The first one would be uh, kind of summarizing your inaugural speech where you you said that you were interested, you really had the focus on bringing kids not leaving after college, you know, and I think this, you would indicate this project is a big portion of that. My first question would be, is this the only, or do you have more projects like this in your hands for the next four years? And then uh, I'll follow up after you finish that. Yeah, well, thank you for that question, Hunter. I hope you're doing well. Um, what I would tell you is um, we've worked with the legislature over the last couple of years. Um, we have made significant capital investments in site development. Um, and so when you look at what's happening in our state, I mean, clearly uh, this um, particular site up in Marshall County is a phenomenal site. We're opening up additional acres there. Um, there's great um, highways in the area. There's great rail service in the area. Um, but 
when you look at what's happening in our state now, when you think about the site that we have as a state uh, in Lauderdale County, when you look at the site that we have as a state, uh, with, of course, in partnership with our local and, and um, county governments in Warren County, south of Vicksburg, when you look at the, the new site development that Lamar and Forest County did a partnership on just west of Hattiesburg, when you look at uh, many of the sites that are going on on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, uh, Mississippi has more sites that are ready to invest, shovel ready, if you will, um, than a whole lot of states around the country. And so I anticipate this is the next announcement of many announcements coming over the next five years because we, as a team, our legislative leadership, our office, MDA, and our locals have worked together over the last five years making the necessary investments that's getting us ready for the next one. I, I will tell you, I, I have, um, since we have um, been told that we won this site, which by the way, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I believe that they started the search here with about 150 sites all throughout the country. Uh, we got narrowed down to a final three and we've been in intense negotiations over the last 45 to 60 days on final terms uh, that you will see in this agreement. Um, but uh, 2020, I'll just say this, in 2023, negotiating this deal and running for office were not the only two things that we were doing. There's a lot of other opportunities out there, um, some that are uh, closer to being ready than others, uh, but this is going to be a, a great week for economic development for the state of Mississippi. But I'll tell you, I think that as we go in the weeks ahead, we're going to have more great weeks um, saying to the world that Mississippi is open for business. And the final follow-up, Governor, would be if, if this has any you know, plan for the increase of population in certain areas, if, if this is under your mindset of wanting to build the economy with people or as such and thank you for the uh, yeah you, you talk about population growth and um i'll just point out here because uh, all of y'all like to talk about it a lot um in terms of uh population growth and the, and the census numbers i will just remind everyone that the census uh admitted about 30 days after it came out that mississippi was one of the two most undercounted states in the entire nation they actually undercounted Mississippi by 4.37% by their own estimation, which is about 130,000 people. So Mississippi probably has closer to 3.1 million people. Much of that population growth certainly is occurring in the area in which this uh, investment is being made. You think about a county like DeSoto, just to the west of Marshall. Um, DeSoto County is at or near 200,000 people in DeSoto County alone. But what we've seen in the last five years or so is a lot of population shifts south to Tate County and east into Marshall County and on, um, on over. And I think a project like this is going to see significant population growth in Marshall County. And the great thing about that population growth is it's going to be population growth with people who are earning wages that are currently 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.7 times what the average county wage of Marshall County is today. And so again, it's going to take the local people that are there, give them an opportunity um, to get a job paying more than they're currently making. But it's also going to attract more people into the county and the surrounding counties uh, that want to live there. Because in Mississippi, not only is it an affordable place to live, uh, the quality of life um, is extremely, extremely high. Listen, I know y'all got questions. If you want to follow up with more questions uh, with our team, please do so. Uh, I know these, I can look out here in the crowd and see my uh, friends in the legislature have work to do and they need to get back to the Capitol. Um, and so I'm going to cut this off now. But again, what a huge, huge day for the great state of Mississippi. And it's a day that we celebrate today, that we're going to celebrate for the next three days. But please know that everything that made today possible started years ago as we made incredibly important investments in our infrastructure, incredibly important investments in lowering our taxes, incredibly important uh, investments in our sites all throughout the state, and investments in our human capital, which brings more and more